Good to see oh, you, you my friend. Like that. Who's dancing? Huh? Speaking? Not all of them, then. No. No. <laughs> MLTC just Richard Ben. Okay. BGC just Harlow. Okay. And uh, they're going to go ask Frank Dieter if he wants to speak. Hey, what's Ramos? Last name? Harris. With chicken? Harris. Just got three here. Mark. Okay. Okay, you ready? Can you fit in here? Okay, my friends, uh, we're going to start the uh, ceremony again. Welcome to all of you. We welcome to our honored guests, the Assistant Commissioner of F Division, Treaty Commissioner, of course, the, uh, the Chief of the uh, Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations, Chief Bobby Cameron, and I saw Vice Chief Heather Bear is here. Are the other Vice Chiefs here? Just you? Okay, we're going to get started here. I want to introduce the, the host of our assembly here, Chief Anne Thomas. Kiokita <laughs> Ang mina kapem na wasutig. Iko mino tatos kihaganag. ACTC, ACCFS, 
Porque me na capítulo de Simote. Moi ot stogi spenoyg, no ans ke sototowa. Maya uhtomana ne big school, mamo itau ino gadi soimgo. Ye gwa me apotitayan, instam gawi mat big square. Samigo Ta partimon i migwean. Today is a good day. It's a positive day in moving forward. In addressing a social issue that's plaguing our communities across Canada, which is the drugs things that are not good, things that are taking lives and destroying lives in our community. It's everyone's responsibility to find solutions to the social issue that's plaguing our community. I myself, I used to cope with alcohol for 29 years of my life because of issues that I was scared to talk about. But I've been sober since October 2015, and I, I still walk the talk, humbly with our Creator. I had gone to treatment at Cree Nation, and I'm glad that Frida Hennecke is here. The one thing that I want to say is we need to stand together, united, to teach our little ones how to survive instead of coping with drugs and alcohol. We've seen the hurt in our communities and we're burying more loved ones because of alcohol and drugs instead of natural causes like old age. But today is a positive day as we honor our partners, the RCMP. It's also, they're also our partners when we talk about history, treaties. They're also our partners there. The sacredness of treaty. Even the spirit and intent and the inherent right of who we are So we need to work with them. We need to do that. So not only my grandchildren, but yours as well, can have their future is looking bleak. Sometimes I cry. because of what I see in my community. And even with the drug bust, it was my son-in-law. And my in-law, his father, that were bringing the drugs here. Do I condone it? Of course not. Because I'd rather I'd rather support healing. Am I involving myself? Of course not. Because again, I'd rather support healing. Tapuin, speaking the truth. I've been there, done that. So today is a good day. I want to thank the elders for their prayers, their wisdom, their guidance. 
sometimes sometimes our fight is not a good one but yet we have i have no control over anybody on what they choose to do when they're adults i have no control the only thing i can do is keep praying for them but today again i feel so honored to be a part of this day because we have a lot of work ahead of us a lot of work but how we do it is to unite together because i know wichkin is not the only first nation community that has this drug problem and i also know that our mental health therapists that work in the community serving our community are doing a tremendous job not only working with adults but also working with our children and youth the one thing man i uh, nigga we you got no that way my parents they never had much but what they were rich on is teaching me the truth and the way of life i know that i'll never be perfect and i never ever claim to be but i want to thank them today because their baby girl has been sober and all the teachings and their values and their everything that they've taught me even surviving and being proud of who i am regardless of what anybody thinks of me but to be proud of who i am she always believed in me and she always told me my mother i'm talking about to love who i am and for many years those years that i drank i didn't love who i was so i know about addiction because i've been there and i don't judge people that cope with drugs and alcohol i can only pray for them but thank you so much for coming to this historic event where we honor our partners in helping us side by side work with us side by side because of our history in treaties of the making back in 1876 they were there they were there and again they are here you could see the after the mic on mr haya nanaskuman tabuya i today is a good day and thank you so much for coming thank you if so all right thank you chief and thomas i just got instructions from way high above tell the chief to keep the comments short that doesn't include you chief <laughs> how long have you been sober since 2015 october 2015 and you still have cut yeah yeah <laughs> i beat you I've been sober since April 
but I'm high on marijuana. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is a, a true, <laughs> true historic event. The treaty makers said, the red goats will protect you. And that meant the police will protect your communities. And thank you, RCMP, for doing just that. They never, they don't often get honored, but today we're doing that. It makes my heart flutter because it's dangerous work when you're confronting armed people who are normally high on drugs and making money killing our people. It's such a great honor. By the way, I, I was blaming the, uh, the slippery conditions outside. I fell down and that's why I got some tape here. But the, the ice had nothing to do with it. My wife beat me up. <laughs> Again. How many people know the uh, serenity prayer? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. And I heard my wife praying on the way up. God grant me the serenity to accept the high price of gasoline today. <laughs> Give me the courage to stay the hell home <laughs> and the wisdom to know the difference. So she prayed. I want to call up the next speaker. What the hell is it? Oh, the treaty commissioner. My good friend, the Honorable Mary Culbert. I'm not as agile in my younger days when I could jump up and down on the stairs here. It's a bit of a, a ways. Good morning. Miigwech to the elders who lifted the prayers today and for the community of Wichikin for inviting us all to here to this event today. Um, thank you, Chief Cameron and other chiefs for asking me to participate in the grand entry. It was wonderful to come to the community today. We haven't been here in about two years because of COVID. And it's always welcoming and well put together. <clears throat> it's lovely to see Chief Annie. I've talked with her many times in the past and I know the heart that she has for her community. Women have a different way of leading in our nations and in our organizations. Inherently, we, we nurture things, we grow things. The men are to be our protectors. As a treaty commissioner in Saskatchewan, and the first woman treaty commissioner and the nation's woman, it can be very difficult to sit between your people and the crown. Having to understand the history and reconcile that with things you want to do and what the crown says they can't do. Researching, trying to understand and figure different ways to work with First Nations and the Crown together. 
uniting our nations, supporting our communities. That's what I try to do. The Northwest Mounted Police have a long history. They were first created in 1873. And in about 1904 to 1920, they changed to what we see now in the Red Coats, the RCMP. When they were created, it was to bring order to the West. It was to supervise the treaties. It was to protect the First Nations people from molestation, to protect them from the whiskey traders. That's what they asked for, our ancestors who entered into treaty, our leaders, our First Nations. They said, you must protect us. You have to protect our people from the whiskey traders. You have to protect them from settlers coming into our territory, ensure that our people are not molested, are not bothered, are not offended. And we know that that scenario changed drastically over the years. The RCMP became enforcers of assimilation. They took our grandparents and our great-grandparents away to residential schools. They assisted in the apprehension of children from families, from homes, and from nations. They enforced the pass and permit system. They enforced the Indian Act. So that relationship changed drastically. And it's all because of colonization, to come onto the land and take the resources, take everything they could from our people. As a commissioner, you're supposed to be neutral. But neutrality means the parties have to be equal to begin with. There is no equitable relationship in this province and in this country, and we all know that. So I may appear that I lean the First Nations way, but I'm trying to make things equitable. So that's the way I lean. In Treaty 6, our ancestors there negotiated with Commissioner Morris that there be a famine and pestilence clause, relief in times of famine and pestilence. The drugs that we see in our communities and our gangs and our nations today, that's pestilence. When I go home, I'm from Kansa, Kizikus, Cody, and Key. My relations all there suffer from the same thing we see in this nation today, in our other nations. We have rampant opioid addiction, rapid family violence, and violence within our own community. Our leadership is not respected, because we have been taught to not respect each other. Gangs and drug dealers overrun leadership, and the RCMP does little and next to nothing in some places to help our communities defend themselves. So when you have a community that's trying to heal, and you have an RCMP detachment and officers being kind, doing their jobs, and working with this community to enforce what they might need, may not know is a treaty right. That's what they were supposed to do. I hope to see more and more things in our communities come like this, that the police actually helped us. Where I'm from, I don't call the police if I'm in trouble. I get out of town. So I know Chief Cameron's waving at me, he's probably saying, hey, you're talking too long, Commissioner. <laughs> I want to thank you for inviting me here. We can talk all day about treaty, but unless our nations are healthy, unless our communities are healing from all the generations of trauma we've faced, and unless our partners are helping us, treaty will mean nothing at the end of the day. Miigwech. Thank you, uh, Treaty Commissioner Mary. Welcome to the media, by the way. Who's here? CTV? Global? Mox and Telegraph? <laughs> We're all here. PA Tribune? Right on. Who are you? APTN. Wow. What does that stand for? 
Okay, I, I thought it stood, stood for something rated X, but <laughs> we'll accept that. Thank you, Mary. The next speaker I want to introduce is, uh, I saw Corey Lara here. Where's Corey? Is he here? You guys all look the same with that uniform. You all look as scary as the next one. I want to introduce, is it wonderful to have the, the treaty commissioner, also the assistant commissioner of Saskatchewan RCMP, both our ladies. Women, take it over, hey! <laughs> Male-dominated positions, high-ranking people, God's blessing to have Assistant Commissioner of F Division, Commissioner Rhonda Blackmore. Come on up and say a few words. Thank you uh, to Chiefs Thomas and Cameron <clears throat> for, the, for their remarks and for having us here today. I'm Assistant Commissioner Rhonda Blackmore, the Commanding Officer of the Saskatchewan RCMP. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the traditional lands, Treaty 6 territory, which encompasses the traditional territories of many First Nations and the homeland of the Métis Nation. The RCMP acknowledges its dedication to honour and respect the spirit of reconciliation and Treaty 6. This acknowledgement also reaffirms our relationship with one another and will last as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the rivers flow. I'm very honoured to, to be here today amongst everyone present. Elders, dignified guests, leaders, partners, colleagues, and members of Wichita Lake First Nation. Earlier this month, I was pleased to receive a call from Chief Bobby Cameron. He'd reached out on behalf of Chief Thomas, inviting the Saskatchewan RCMP to a ceremony, recognizing the great work of our officers at Spiritwood Detachment and all those involved in the recent seizure of illegal drugs, paraphernalia, firearms, and money from a resident on Wichican Lake First Nation. This seizure came after officers conducted a drug trafficking investigation, which resulted in the arrest of four individuals and the execution of a search warrant. Seven firearms, three prohibited weapons, 32 grams of crack cocaine, more than 23 grams of suspected methamphetamines, and 105 grams of an unknown substance and drug trafficking equipment were seized. Chief Cameron commented on what a positive impact this will have on the community, the community he comes from, having these illegal items removed from the streets of Wichican Lake. He said that he believes the seizure will save lives, and I wholeheartedly agree. Any time we're able to disrupt the movement or use of illegal drugs or firearms within and amongst our communities, there is the potential that someone has been spared from victimization, harm, or even death. I very much share the sentiments of both Chief Thomas and Chief Cameron on this matter, and I'm so very proud of the work of our officers and the cooperation and support shown to us by Wichican Lake First Nation and the FSIN. To be standing here today, seeing our members acknowledged with this ceremony is very much a moment of pride for me as the commanding officer of the Provincial Police Service of Saskatchewan. It speaks to the excellent, strong leadership on the part of our North District Management Team led by Superintendent Ted Monroe and Inspector Murray Chamberlain. They are exemplary people and exemplary officers who are held in high regard in F Division and beyond. They have worked tirelessly to build on and improve the relationships detachments in this service area have with their communities, with partners and people they serve. 
When we see these detachment level successes, we know the positive impacts have a ripple effect outward. These issues of gun, guns and drugs in our communities are not isolated to any one community. In this case, it's the hard work and dedication of the officers at Spiritwood RCMP that resulted in removing illegal goods from Wichican Lake First Nation. Our commander, Sergeant Sebastian Andrews, shared how proud he is of the work of the members and the employees at his detachment and of the connection they've built with local leadership and their collective steadfast dedication to protecting the communities in which they live and work. The Saskatchewan RCMP as a whole remains committed to mitigating and reducing the harm caused by meth, opioids, other illicit drugs, and prioritizes suppressing firearm and gang-related offenses. Further, we want these types of investigations and resulting seizures to send a message to all those involved with criminal networks. We will investigate, we will continue to disrupt, and we will dismantle illegal activity in Saskatchewan. We will not tolerate illegal trafficking of guns and drugs on First Nations or in any community in Saskatchewan. Additionally, our detachments aim to put an emphasis on community policing and to actively employ preventative strategies in their areas to deter criminal activity. Together with our partners, including municipal police agencies, the provincial government, and other RCMP divisions, we will continue to target this type of activity through intelligence-led enforcement actions. I would personally like to thank Chief Bobby Cameron, Vice Chief Dutch Leraw, and Jason Stonechild for their openness and commitment to building on the working relationship between the FSIN and the RCMP. I would also like to thank Chief Ann Thomas and the councillors and leadership of Wichican Lake First Nation for recognizing Spiritwood Detachment with this ceremony and for valuing our officers and employees and the connection they have to this First Nation. On behalf of myself and my entire senior management team, I want to acknowledge what a key role having meaningful, mutually beneficial relationships play in our communities. I want to acknowledge that the Saskatchewan RCMP is dedicated to taking meaningful action towards reconciliation with the Indigenous people and communities we serve and maintaining an inclusive and culturally sensitive police service. This includes ensuring our officers and our employees learn from cultural competency training and from the Indigenous history education. These efforts, which are ongoing, benefit all of us, the police, our partners, and all Saskatchewan people and First Nation communities. I'm proud of the progress we as a policing organization are making. I'm proud of the commitment of our officers have every day to learning and growing. Thank you for the opportunity to be here and for acknowledging the hard work of our officers at Spiritwood Detachment. And thank you to each of you for your commitment to public safety. It is appreciated. Thank you. Assistant Commissioner Rhonda Blackmore, thank you so much for the words and your encouragement to your detachment units. With how many people in uh, spirit with detachment, by the way? Active officers. Okay, I think we need about 90 because Bobby Cameron lives here in Wichigan Lake. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. By the way, uh, we also want to identify the, the leadership here. If they're here, Please stand up and be recognized. Raymond Harris, Councillor. There you are. <laughs> Councillor Mark Tippelman.
That guy was about 150 pounds when he got elected. <laughs> Look at him now, eh? 200 and... Oh. <laughs> Councillor Eliza Tipuan. That one lost weight. <laughs> That'll be twenty dollars, please. <laughs> We're good by tribal councils here. Battleford's tribal council, representing Little Pine First Nation, Chief Donnie Iron Child. Come on up here and say a few words. Chief Donnie Arnchow. Well, I was told to keep her short and sweet by Chief Bobby there. It's Taco Tuesday back there, so he wants to eat. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all for inviting me to Wichikin here. It's been a while since I've been. I got some friends from here, the gym, so nice to be back. And also, I'd like to give thanks to the RCMP for what they're, what they're, what they're doing here. Like it's, it's been a common practice, I guess, an issue. Even back home, we were having an issue with uh, where our RCMP are, are scared to even live on a reserve now. They're, emailing me asking me what can be done then i'm just like i don't know you guys are the police so but but it's good that they're reaching out eh? we're going to invite them also to come in uh sit with our council and discuss what can be done because this is a common issue all over the place all over saskatchewan <clears throat> and we are losing young people saturday we just buried in a beautiful young teenage girl because of drugs. Monday, I attended another funeral in Moosman because of addictions. And then on Sunday, I just lost an uncle because of an overdose. So this is becoming a serious issue. Like, I, like it's, it's surprising, like, the people that I don't know who's doing this, I thought they were the last people that were doing any types of drugs. So it's hidden. It's a, people are hiding it pretty good, the use. But I'm glad this is a stepping stone where we get to actually open up to the RCMP, invite them in, take a step back, let's team up together instead of arguing and putting each other down and being scared to fight this problem as a community, communities, many communities, province-wide. Because I'm pretty sure that this is right across Canada. <clears throat> and people are being scared, scared, scared to come out of their homes, scared to walk around at night now. And they're taking our children. And people that are fighting against it are being brought in, are being bullied and being scared away. So we need more people to come out and be brave and stand up to these dealers. We gotta brighten up our communities again bring back the love like I said yesterday I was talking to where we got to show our young people like there's no bad kids I was saying they just drifted off a little we just have to bring them back on the right road send them to their cookums and their mushrooms to have something to eat have some tea sit down listen to stories that probably doesn't happen anymore it's because of social media, the things that go on. And now that's all everybody talks about is drugs and alcohol and not the good stuff that goes on in a community. But again, yes, I'd like to thank you all. I'm gonna keep her sweet, short and sweet. I am hungry too, so. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Chief Thomas, for inviting me to your reserve. And thank you to all the other chiefs it's nice to be in public again instead of Zoom. Otherwise, that would have been.
was sleeping already, and what, I just pretended I was online. But, <laughs> but thank you all again. I don't know what the hell he's high on. Good speech to you. Thank you very much. My bosses tell me, just call on the ones that are of a number. The fifth speaker from BATC is the, uh, the tribal chief for Battleford's Agency Tribal Council, Chief Cheryl Kapiswad. How are we doing, by the way? Are we okay? Lighten up a little bit, eh? Come on up here, Chief. Hello, can I ask you to ask me to ask me to ask me I'm kind of nervous, <laughs> so please forgive me. Anyways, um, in our nation, Tua, we are having a, a difficulties with our young ones, and um, uh, I did, with the young ones that are there doing the math and uh, the gangs, um, I did teach them in the in the in the classroom, and so as our leaders, as leaders in the community, we're trying our best to uh, help them as best as we can. And yes, the kids are not bad; they just follow the wrong. Um, they just follow their friends, and they're guided by by uh, peer pressure. And uh, so, for us in our nation. We're trying to make that connection individually as best as we can. So we're trying our best to um, uh, talk to the kids, the young ones, um, individually. So I took, uh, I'm taking the step to try and um, take a group of young ones for supper. And um, I'm trying to brainstorm and trying my, uh, trying my, teaching techniques to see what I can do and what our, our, my leadership can do to help the young ones in our nation. And uh, it is a struggle and I, I do feel for them. And it is hard when they do come to you and ask, ask as young people to help them and to guide them. And your hands are tied because you don't know the drug, like I don't know what, what meth is all about. I'm, um, I'm 53 years old and I've never touched alcohol. I didn't even know what marijuana, how marijuana smelled until I was like 40 some years old. The kids said, it smells like skunk. And I said, really? So, you know, so I didn't know what marijuana smelled like. But uh, like I said, the meth is, is uh, taking over our young ones and um, I do pray uh, to the Creator every day, every morning, every evening, before I go to bed, I do smudge for our, our young ones and I do ask the Creator to guide, to guide them to kapunita tsikama, kapunita tsik the drugs and the alcohol that is uh, uh, hurting our young ones. And uh, I, I thank um, Wichikin for inviting us. And um, this is a very powerful, powerful um, um, gathering. And uh, we will be looking um, to the Redcoats as well at, uh, for guidance and support to help us in our nation. Hi, hi, Kinanaskumna.
And from the BATC chiefs that are here, I thank you for coming. Uh, Chief Laria Henneke from Atakuku First Nations. <laughs> uh, myself, uh, Chief Tanya Aguilera Antima from uh, Mosquito Grizzly Bear Head <laughs> uh, Chief Clint Watney couldn't attend from Red Pheasant. Uh, Chief uh, Chief Lori Whitecap couldn't attend also, and Chief uh, um, Weenie from uh, uh, that place. <laughs> that place. <laughs> and, and I'd like to uh, thank my council in the back for uh, attending also. I brought my crew. Thank you. Sometimes your mind goes blank. Chief, uh, uh, you know her name from that place. <laughs> so whoever you are, you're being honored. Chief Ann Thomas told me one thing that really lifted my spirits. Because we all know, most of us leaders that are elected are interrelated. Eh? Sometimes at election time all these things come to haunt you. And sometimes where you have to do the right thing it's against your own family member. And that's tough as hell to do. If somebody is selling drugs in your community. It just happens to be your son-in-law. You just have to do it. Chief Ann Thomas, you did just that. Oh, I didn't hear back. Big hand for our chief. <laughs> That's leadership. And that takes, well, I just don't want <laughs> Who needs to say that? By the way, we have a next city cop here too. Jason Stonecha used to be the deputy chief in Prince Albert. I still hate him. You never charged me for nothing, eh? You tried. File Hills, Capel Tribal Council from Chief of Big Mixes First Nation, Chief Frank Teacher. Come on up here, sir. You didn't think you had to speak it. <laughs> well, you are speaking. I didn't know. I didn't prepare a speech. Um, first of all, thank you to the elders for, for that prayer. To the drummers, thank you for that honor song and victory song. To the Chief Thomas, I believe. I, I'm not good with names, right? But uh, thank you. Uh, first time in Chinette Lake, or not Chinette Lake. My apologies. Bobby Cameron's a nation. Uh, see, I'm, I didn't prepare a speech, so now I'm blank. But uh, these are the best, that's right. Wichita Lake, there you go. First time here. <laughs> But uh, Chief Bobby asked me to come up and, and uh, share a few words on behalf of my nation and the route we took. Um, every nation in throughout Canada, we, we share the same, right? We share the same uh, problems, and uh, we went we went the other route. Um, I was telling my colleague there, Edmund Allen Bird, that. Uh, 
It's kind of defeating the purpose what I'm gonna, if I do have to come up and speak, but uh, we're actually one of the nations down in the south that uh, went the opposite, you know. We, we do have uh, opioids, meth, you name it, cocaine, black market uh, marijuana dealers on our nation, and we went the other way and we opened up our own medical dispensary, right? Uh, I shared a, uh, I share a grandson or a nephew with uh, Chief Daywalker from Okanese. That's the only reason why I went that way. I have a lot of my sons, my own nephews growing up, grandkids now that are gonna be growing up and uh, getting back to that uh, nephew that of mine who's from the Okanese nation there. He took one, one, uh, one puff of a marijuana cigarette and now he's in the uh, hospital and he's been there for well over 10 years now. So uh, th that's one of the reasons why myself, along with the rest of my council, we decided to uh, open up our own dispensary, right? So we wanted to know what exactly is out there for, for my, not only my, my people, my nation, but for the surrounding nations uh, that, that are on my, my, my reserve there. And, uh, uh, we didn't think it was, we were going to get the go-ahead, right? We took it to a, a, a lot of engagements with our nation. We took it to our elders. They actually uh, proved it. Uh, because they seen the benefits of, of uh, medical approved marijuana. I'm not here to, uh, to, to, uh, tell you guys to do that, but that, that's the way we, we tackled it, right? And uh, uh, and COVID sure opened up uh, our eyes too. We had a lot of uh, non-native people come onto our nation during COVID. We had our, our borders up. We uh, got their license plate numbers down. We know exactly what houses they went to. We know exactly what color of skin they were. A lot of them wore the, the turbans. And uh, we gave it to our tribal police. We have our own tribal police that, that, uh, that, that patrols the, the, the five Five Hills First Nations and down in uh, FHQ there. That's a uh, little Black Bear Nation, Star Blanket Nation, Okanish Nation, uh, our, our nation, the Pixies, and CTK Nation. And uh, they're on it. We, we told them, the, the, the tribal police met with each nation, each council, and they told us what they were gonna do and they did it right. And uh, they actually uh, uh, supported uh, what uh, Pabixi's done too, right? And uh, um, and I wanted to kind of approve, uh, uh, make a point, right? Why we did this as a council. It's, it's called jurisdiction. And, and former chief here knows all about it, you know. Um, we're, we're sovereign people. We do have that right to do whatever you want in our nation. If, and if that's opening up a, a medical dispensary to uh, help our young ones to, to uh, cause, cause you can tell your young ones, don't do it, don't do it, but they're gonna do it, right? And, and uh, we did it that way and we, and we followed our, our jurisdiction. It is a gray area, but to this date, we've been open for over two years now and and we're still open, so. Um, again, I, I, I'm just honored to come here and uh, to Chief Cameron's uh, nation here. Um, uh, he told me, to, I guess we gotta be ch uh, short, so. Again, I apologize if uh, what I said uh, offends you guys by, by uh, what the police here did, but I, I commend them for doing that. I told my nation that uh, we will be taking down what we did at the borders there, and, and if that costs me my political career, career, then so be it, right? So, so I did it, and uh, again, I want to thank you all. I don't know Cree, I apologize for that, but uh, that's what happens when the Munio come in and took it away on us. So with that, hi, hi, thank you very much.
Thank you. Let's have another round of applause for Chief Frank Dieter. You can see the concern that our leaders have for this common problem that we have. For a chief to take time to travel probably at least 500 kilometers to come and see what they can take home for the community. Chief Frank Teaser is here to do just that. As you know, in that Treaty 4 territory, they have their own tribal police, right? Still. And uh, those tribal police are sworn to work with our federal police force, the RCMP. So when Chief Ann Thomas says we have to work together, that includes the city police, the municipal police, tribal police, and others. Ego say, I want to introduce the, uh, the tribal chief from Meadow Lake Tribal Council, Chief Richard Ben. <laughs> tribal chief, respectfully ask you to identify your band I mean, chiefs that are members of your tribal council when you're up here. Tribal Chief Richard Ben. Thank you, LJ. Uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge uh, all the elders that started off this beautiful event, this beautiful ceremony with prayer. It's a, it's a positive day today. You know, it's a good day for First Nation people right now. We need more days like this to celebrate the accomplishment of the RCMP and the yes. Wichican leadership, Absolutely. a partnership, working together to battle drugs. You know, as a young leader, well, for myself, I'll let everyone just, just tell about, about myself. My name is Richard Ben. I'm from the Meadow Lake, uh, well, I'm the tribal chief of the Meadow Lake Tribal Council. I'm from Makwasagagan First Nation, Treaty 6 area. MLTC represents three treaties, Treaty 6, 8, and 10. I have uh, some of my chiefs in attendance right now, Chief Jeremy Norman right now. Flying Dust First Nation, Chief Jerry Bernard, English River Dene Nation, Chief Ronald Bitswing, Makwasagagan First Nation, and uh, Chief Leon Crookedneck from Minnesota Bun Cree Nation. But I'm very honored to be here today to join uh, with my auntie. I found out uh, not too long ago, about a few years ago, that Ann Thom Thomas Chief is actually my auntie. I, my, my bear family comes from Wichican First Nation, so I'm very honored to be here. My late Musham was a band member here. His name was uh, Joe Bear, and uh, I was, I'm very honored to be here and to see all my relatives and see all the good things that are happening with the battling of the drugs. I, being a young leader, I got in when I was 23, and every chief here knows the battles we go through, the struggles we go through in our communities with drugs. You know, it's so hard to deal with, to battle with, and also to come up with ideas and working with the RCMP. And that's really good that our RCMP are coming forward and working with the First Nations. A lot of times you don't see that. A lot of times we give them the information in regards to who's selling or who's the um, gang related uh, things happening in your communities, but, and we feel they're not helping. This shows today that, you know, we are doing more and more against drugs. You know, you look on the news, more and more there's more drug seizures happening all over Saskatchewan all over Canada and we're so happy to see that there was a big one in Battleford and we we're really proud that, that was uh taken care of because that's a lot of those drugs we're going to head to our community so we're very you know we commend the RCMP and all the good work you're doing just a round of applause you guys but again I was told to keep it short Chief Bobby Cameron again told me he's, he's been looking at those Indian tacos all all day so uh, LJ, if you could just shorten a little bit, but good to see my good friend LJ and again commend the chief and council for inviting myself and uh, my chiefs from Metal Lake Tribal Council, Bobby Cameron, thank you for inviting us and we need more days like this. We need to celebrate what we're accomplishing today. So with that, Nanasman Mercy Cho, thank you.
All right, thank you, uh, Richard Ben. I didn't get, we didn't get to see those chiefs that are here, so I want to go through them again. Vice Chief Richard DeRocher, is he here? Chief Jonathan Sylvester? No? Chief Frank uh, Francis Iron? Chief Jerry Bernard? Yeah, there he is. Chief Jeremy Norman. There's a couple of booze there for you, Jeremy. <laughs> they don't like you. Chief Leon Crookedneck. Chief Ronald Bitswing. Are you related to that cowboy, that racing, racing driver? What's his name again? Raymond Mitsuing? You're related to him. And you admit it in public? <laughs> Tell him we said hello. Chief Blaine Fiddler is not here. Representing the Prince Albert Grand Council, I also want to ask a Grand Chief to uh, introduce his chiefs, whether they're here or not. Let's call up Chief Brian Hardlock, Grand Chief, and Vice Chief George Stanley. Thank you, LJ. Hey, how about a big hand for LJ here, eh? Think about his 5,000 MC job. Good job there, LJ. Uh, 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 he played in my graduation dance 40 years ago. <laughs> you know which song was famous that time? Anybody? Outside the papers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, LJ. I got the vice chief here with me. Here, a uh, wow, a uh, what a great historic event, chief. A uh, honoring a uh, the spirit with detachment of the RCMP. It is a historic event, a, uh, and we are a uh, lifting up a uh, the RCMP many many times. A, uh, we put them down, but today we are lifting them up. Thank you, thank you, Chief, and thank you, Bobby, for the for the invitation. Here, give him a big hand. Congratulations. No, tema ga yaga ni gan ya na nash mama mo ko tam. I thank the Creator for this beautiful day. Ya the drum group ya tinigan kigan kita nash ko met man. Igo mi na kitiya ya kitiya ya. The elders for the opening prayer. Kina nas komit nan, kina nas komit nan tini tini. The FSIN chief Bobby Cameron again, and the vice chief Heather. Thank you, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the for today. The other chiefs, oga matkanak, oga mawak. I'll say mo dito oga matkanak, oga mawak, oga may squeal. Kita tamaskat nan. We acknowledge you here, all of you here today. A Magat the community of Wichigan here, Wichigan First Nation. I want to say that I'm uh, very glad to be here today. The elders, the knowledge keepers of our communities. And, uh, we truly, truly uh, yeah, thank you and acknowledge you uh, yeah, today. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. Chief, it's a. Uh, Night Tawan, Night Tawan, Minikwe win the alcohol. 
Matsumaskegia, the drugs that are a challenge in our communities. In the north, we have woodlogging, a big issue that we have addressed to the RCMP many, many, many times. And uh, it's still there. Federal law in a federal offense. Person gets a uh, $1,000 fine or six months in jail. They get a $1,000 fine. It's a little slap in the wrist, but it continues. And we'll work on that. We will, and we have. And I have to also po uh, point out that 2023 will be 150 years what the Treaty Commissioner talked about up here. And it, it is policing is your, our treaty right. in the Sotamagi a treaty right. As leaders, we have to remember that. Uh, yes, so 150 years, 1873. And was what their purpose? Of course, to enforce policy, federal policy and legislation. And of course, as First Nations leaders, we know the RCMP history, right? Why they came here to protect the settlers. From whom? Well, from us. Today, we have community tripartite agreements. Those came to an end three years ago, and they continue. They are working on them, but we're not involved. We're not called developing that First Nations policing agreement. But I hope, I hope that we can be involved. Because it's us, the First Nations community, the grassroots, the leaders that know what kind of policing that we want. A, um, Prince Albert Grand Council signed an agreement with the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police a few years back. And really, to work with them when it comes to search and rescues. Before a person is lost, we're trying to recover a body. RCMP come in, step aside, we'll take over. We're making certain the Prince Albert Rand Council, and I know the FSI and that doesn't happen anymore, so we work with them. They, uh, we have to do more work, and you know, ch Chiefs, I'm up here, you know, I, I have a, an opportunity to work with the RCMP to get our youth, her, our, our future, our youth, to get into policing. In the last few years, and that's because of what's happening with the RCMP and what's out there, we haven't had that in our First Nations. So we have to work on something to try to get our young people. If he is spin, if we're gonna in the future have self-administered policing, we have to have those experience a uh, people, you in there. Thank you, Rick. Rick does a cadet program in the Prince Albert Grand Council. Uh, Rick, a uh, 25, 22 year RCMP officer retired. Thank you, Rick. I'll stand up. You know, there's a, uh, in the last little while, this last little while, you remember the uh, legislation, and that's uh, to make a uh, policing an essential service. And to help out those self-administered policing that are people that, uh, the First Nations that have that for money, because they always struggle. One thing they reported on, they struggle for funding a self-administered policing programs. Now that piece of legislation should help them. Long, more longer plans instead of five years budgeting. So 
you know, I thank Prime Minister Trudeau for that. The other program, uh, Chiefs, I, I just really, I really want to mention is the First Nations uh, uh, and Inuit policing program. And that's to help us out, you know, to help us uh, uh, to get into moving forward if we want to get into self-administered policing in our First Nations. And we can go there. We can go there. So with that, a uh, 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 tribal chief, uh, uh, Ben here, uh, uh, when I came in, first of all, when he walked by there, I uh, sort and sweet, okay, chief? <laughs> when I came in, don't give him your, uh, your name, that they have warrants, he said, to the RCMP. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Again, 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 Mercy, Joe, but that you. Hey, hey. Just real quick, I'm going to hog the mic here just to, to thank the RCMP for keeping our community safe. That's what it's about. As First Nations at the Tribal Council in our northern part of the province, we want to create healthy communities for our young people so our young people can be the best that they can be. So today, to honor the RCMP, to acknowledge the work that you continue to do, we understand there's challenges with federal laws, what's out there right now, there's only certain amount that we can do within the community. But I know um, from what I'm hearing from the community, it takes a community as well to build a healthy community. We all want a healthy community to build that community for our children to be the best that they can be. I work in sports and rec at the Tribal Council for a number of years and I see the talent that we have in our children if given that opportunity. I know that drugs and alcohol continue to be a challenge not only here in our northern parts working with Ted and the RCMP we all know the challenge is there but we ask the membership to do their part as well. It takes a community to raise a child, and that's true. And I, and I know we all love and care for our young people, and we want to give them the best possible opportunity to be the best that they can be. Remember, it's not about the adults. It's about leaving that legacy for our young children. We don't want our young children to be shocked anymore. We want our children to, be grow, to grow up and be the best that they can be. And I know we have that talent in our communities. So let's continue to support. I say love does not cost anything. Show the love and kindness to one another. We can go a long way and support the RCMP. I know we don't do that enough to honor them and we surely appreciate the work that you're doing. And we have to continue to build that relationship with the RCMP and the leadership in the community. We don't have to be scared of the RCMP when they're walking behind us or driving behind us. <laughs> so when you're driving home, don't speed. <laughs> be a lot of RCMP on the road. Ted would be there, yeah. But, but with all due respect, I do acknowledge the RCMP and the work that you continue to do and will continue to build that legacy. One day we'll have our own First Nations policing. We will do that. Why not? Why can't we teach our children to be the RCMP or take over our justice system in our communities? And we can still be partners. We can still be friends. I'm not bashing the RCMP. Why cannot? Why can't we be the best that we can be and pave that path forward for our young children? But I do want to acknowledge our MC Lawrence, I've known him since I was three, four years old. My dad was a former chief up in Wallace, and Lawrence was up there playing music. I remember, and his daughter works, Cheryl Kimberly works with us at the Tribal Council. So we are blessed to have Lawrence in our circle and in our community. So, Chief, thank you very much, and to all the work that you're doing. And let's continue on this with this legacy. It's a good thing to build a safe community for our young people. Masicho, thank you very much. Thank you, Grand Chief. Ryan Hardlot. 
and uh, Vice Chief Joseph Tassani, Denny Nation, Hatchet Lake. <coughs> I notice the chiefs all smile, eh? When you see a cop, you don't see RCMP or whatever, you get scared, eh? And if you see one following you, you just start shaking. Even if you don't have anything to hide, eh? You feel guilty. I didn't know Rick Sanderson was going to be here. Hello, Rick. I should have warned the community. Hide your wives, your daughters, your sheep. Rick Sanderson is coming. Ron Morasti. Let's have a hand for Ron Morasti. That's the uh, scribe that puts together the PA Tribune. So if you want some good, good reporting, that's him. By the way, they didn't uh, mention the chiefs that belong to PAGC. One of the chiefs is uh, Chief Rene Boyer from Cumberland House. And uh, if you ever come to PA, they have a hotel in Cumberland, in PA. It's come, called Cumberland Crossing. So come and support First Nation business. Igose. Touchwood Agency Tribal Council. That's what agency, tribal council, we have uh, from Kawaka to Chief Ta Dusty Orn and Tom Dusty Orn, Kawaka Tusi. Chief Tom Dusty Horn, please. Let's have a big round of applause for Chief Tom Dusty Horn. Come on up here. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I um I gotta uh, first of all wanna acknowledge the elders that were saying the opening prayer. And um I know it's uh um wanna kinda of losing my brain of thought here, but uh you know the same issues that are happening here in Michigan Lake First Nation. Same issues happening in the Touchwood Agency Tribal Council. I, I do know for a fact that, uh, you know, when the previous chiefs were talking about losing band members, I still, we lost many of band members. And there's, uh, it's unfortunate that, you know, we, we, we make the, uh, we make the address of addictions and stuff like this it's um it's unfortunate that uh i really <laughs> this one keep speaking yeah keep speaking okay yeah so you know it's unfortunate that uh my uh, the other chiefs in the touch with the Tri tribal council are not here uh chief buffalo from daystars chief Bernos from George Gordon, as well as Chief Wolf from Muskogans. But I do know that there's many, uh, there's many uh, issues that arise within. And, you know, we acknowledge uh, 
the elders, the singers, the, the chiefs that are here. And um, I know that uh, I want to thank the RCMP. This is a positive moment. This is a positive day in moving forward. Ladies and gentlemen, could we have the elders please talk to these people? We are trying to save lives here. We are trying to kill the drugs and alcohol. That's why we're here, and we're not here to have political battles. Please, please, please sit down and talk to the elders. Please get the elders to talk to these people. This is not the place to do it. We have so, so many people that have died because of drugs. So many people have died because of drugs. Because drugs are killing our people.
things we're doing to save lives. Okay, we ought to continue on, Chief. So first of all, I'd like to, um, uh, it kind of seems like I'm doing a day's of blue here, but I'd like to thank the elders for saying the prayer this, this evening or this afternoon. The drummers, obviously, thanks for the songs. And to the chiefs, thanks for uh, seeing some familiar faces again. I know it's been a lot rough two years or whatever. So, uh, you know, the, the, I want to, first of all, I want to acknowledge Chief Thomas in your community. I, uh, you know, people have different ways of um, wanting to be heard. And, you know, when it comes to addictions and stuff like this, it's it's difficult. From the Tribal Council, TNTC Tribal Council, um, you know, I speak for, for what's happening on my First Nation. And, you know, we do have the issue of the drugs, the alcohol, the, the opioids. And every, every chief that came up here and, and announced the bad luck on their reserve happens on our agency too as well. It's just not one particular First Nation or one section of the province. It's right across not only Saskatchewan but Canada. And I want to acknowledge you chief and your council. You're an inspiration. This is a one step of many. I want to thank the RCP that are in attendance. Um, you know, we need more of this. Uh, we've been allies, I guess, so to speak, since the treaties were signed. And as a young, young leader, it's, it's reiterated year in, year out about who our partners are and how we can accomplish things. Drugs and alcohol are just one little small, small issue. Uh, we need more jobs, more employment, stuff of that nature, right? So. And it all to build a better community. One of the other chiefs said that earlier, that when it takes a community to build a child, well, that's definitely true. And, but it takes leadership like yourselves, Chief Thomas, and your council, and the rest of the chief and council here, to step up to that plate. Yeah. And it's not about being in power, so to speak. It's about doing the right thing. I heard that thing earlier today, too. We gotta do the right thing. And, you know, I may be only chief here for four years on my First Nation, but the next chief, I guarantee you, 10, 20, 30 years down the line, are going to bring the same issues at task. But it's how we can collaborate as partners and friends and allies to target the situation such as drugs and alcohol. The very first thing I said to my leadership four years ago was, the fight's never within. I think I said this in the FSA too. The fight's not within us. It's out there. It's out there now, in, outside the community. We try to build it better. And, you know, it's a good example like what, what happened here in Michigan Lake First Nation. You know, it, we obviously don't, never grew into the drugs or alcohol. It, it's always brought in. So we need partners like yourselves, the RCMP, and the surrounding community, I guess, that need to uh, step up and be partners. So with that, I know it's been uh, quite a long day, hectic day. I know, uh, I got four hours to go. I don't know where other chiefs come from, but you know, the road a little icy or whatever this morning, but I want to wish everybody a safe travel to your home fires because you guys got loved ones too. And it's all a matter of doing the right thing in the next little while here. So thank you very much. And to uh, LJ, it's always good to see you. I like your jokes. Uh, you could sing us a song later on if you want, but everyone else have a good day. Thank you very much, Chief, Chief Tom. <clears throat> We're just about uh, to the honoring part, my friends, so please uh, give us a little patience. I want to introduce one of the Vice Chiefs, uh, and she also wants to speak to a great organization that is with a very important partner with the Chiefs of Saskatchewan. She also represents the Women's Commission of uh, the FSI. 
Vice Chief Heather Bear. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lawrence. And uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge our Creator today on behalf of all of us and uh, our elders that uh, rendered prayers. Thank you, Chief. Your council has they presented us with some tobacco and some cloth, some white cloth for healing and some sweet grass. That's a, a beautiful gift. And this, uh, this is gonna go a long way. This is gonna take us a long way. I represent uh, one of the regional voices of our region, uh, the Women's Commission. And today I want to be here to lift you up. You know, the critical issues that impact our children and families, the number one cause of our grief, the one number one cause of our anger, our fear, our sadness, is drugs and alcohol. And we all know where that came from. And you know, when our people become wounded, you know, we can't put them at fault here. You know, but that's the level of uh, the condition of our people, the woundedness. And, uh, you know, our chiefs are here, our leadership is here. We're here to support you because what the chief and council have done is a very brave step. It's one step forward. One step forward to policing. The, the um, relationship hasn't been a good one. But today we say there's one step positive, step forward. Today we see in the condition, an example. This is in every community. This does, does, doesn't exist in Wichigan Lake. We have people who are crying out. They need help. The funding, the implementation of treaty and inherent rights, we haven't gotten there yet. And that's why our people are wounded. That's why they're sad and angry and crying out. It's not our leadership's fault. Canada needs to make a better effort for true implementation of our treaty and inherent right. It's not our fault. We are with you to the elders, the ones who are in pain. We feel the pain. I go back to, to another funeral where a family is divided. We can't even bury our people in a good way the way we were taught because of division. But my friends, we don't let them win. We have this. This is going to go a long way for our people. This is an important step today. And I lift you up, the chief, the council, we lift up the people of Wichigan because today we're gonna watch and we're gonna be proud. And uh, let's take this step for true reconciliation. You know, that restorative justice that we need to see, we need to feel justice. We need to see justice. You know, justice, she's not blind. And uh, you know, help us win the battle, help us win the war for drugs and alcohol. It was never our way. That was never our way of our people. And we put an end to that. We're gonna create a, you know, we're gonna create something big, something beautiful, and our people will heal and they'll come together again. So, which again, it's a big way, it's good last time. Thank you. Powerful stuff. Thank you, uh, Chief Heather Bear. <laughs> if you want to put the on a good talent show, Chief Heather Bear is one hell of a singer. <laughs> she sounds like Charlie Pride. No, I'm just kidding. We're just about close to the end now. I want to uh, introduce the uh, chief of the FSIN. Should I use your real name? This police here. Okay. Chief Bobby Cameron. Uh, thank you, LJ. Uh, I thank uh, my auntie Priscilla for putting up with this guy. It takes a real patient woman and strong woman to put up with him. But LJ, I want to say you've been an advisor for, for many of us and a, a great friend, a teacher and a role model. 
During the Stone Child Inquiry, when those city police were taking our Indian people out to city streets in Saskatoon and making them walk in the freezing cold and dying, LJ was the chief at the time and really, really took the lead and pressured to make change. Since that day, there has not been a body found on the outskirts of Saskatoon. So LJ, we acknowledge you and we honor you too. Chief Ann Thomas and your council and, and the RCMP. Rhonda Blackmore for always having that good communication. Uh, I, want, I want you to stand up, Rhonda. It takes a woman to make real change. And to the RCMP officers that were that did this amazing thing for us. You did something very special, something significant, something that deserves great honor and distinction. Because we, the, the message here going forward is it's not going to stop here in Wichkin. We want it to happen in flying dust. Makasagaigan, Mosaman, Hatchet Lake, Larange. MGBHLM, Atakakup, Kawakatus, Little Pine, of course, Pipixis, and many other First Nations. This is what true treaty implementation is when the RCMP are safeguarding and protecting our people this way. Let it, let's let it continue. And that's, that's why we reached out to Rhonda and the Chief and Council, uh, Mark and Ramon and Eliza, come up here too because you're our leaders. Ramon and Eliza, Eliza's there. Ramon Harris, come up here. And Barb Tippin, who has been in, at the Spirit Grid RCMP for many years. Barb, we acknowledge you having that communication. <laughs> Barb's been instrumental in that office. So we have gifts for you too, Barb. And to Ted Monroe and Chad McLeod. Chad McLeod um, and I had a, a very heated argument a couple months ago, but they were doing things. They were doing things to put pressure here in our community and other communities. They were doing things to pressure and find those drug dealers so that our children aren't, aren't smoking crack, aren't doing cocaine aren't shooting up heroin. Can you believe it, friends and relatives? There are 10-year-olds that are smoking crystal meth right now on some reserve in Canada and some reserve here in Saskatchewan. A 10-year-old kid should never, ever have access to crystal meth. Never. RCMP that are here, we thank you. We honor you. Let's not let it stop here, Rhonda. Let's make it happen on every First Nation that's battling this. To the chiefs that are here and the tribal chiefs, grand chiefs, Pachinak, you know, we, we, we hear you. To our tribal council, our little tiny reserve, you know, this is why we got to do it. It's a, it is a good day, it's a positive day. And I'm going to come visit you later, Marcel. That's my friend, Marcel Bear. That's my buddy. I'm going to come visit you. I'm going to come listen to you. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay, my friend. Yep, yeah, I'll, come, I'll come visit you and listen to you. I thank our family. Again, Chief Annie Thomas and your council. I know Jordan's not here, but you guys are... This is awesome. Battleford. Mr. Wasis, Musk Cake. You guys stop that. Those those RCP officers in North Island could stop that. <laughs> so at this time, officers that were involved, can you come stand and sit down here? 
our heroes again round of applause one of our band members could have potentially killed one of our children and that's what they stopped so that's the message on behalf of the federation and our vice chiefs Dutch Raw, Heather Bear, David Pratt and Ali Bear let's, let's continue this let's continue doing this for our first nations our children depend on you our grandchildren depend on you and our elders for the prayers Keith Thomas and Dorothy Thomas, Maggie, Barney, Tiplin, Jane, and my mommy, Anna. And if I forgot anybody else, I'm sorry. Thank you for the prayers. Counselors that are here from Pelican Lake, you know, thank you. Our heroes are modern day heroes. Thank you. Treaty implementation, treaty right to justice. Chief Annie Thomas. Thank you. Hi, hi. I want to practice. Thank you, Chief Bobby Cameron. I want to practice pronouncing the names of our honored guests. Just uh, stand and wave to the crowd, guys and gals. Constable Brad Smales. Constable Deandra Collister. <laughs> Constable Ar uh, Jared Archibald. Constable Jeremy Saint Germain. Are you Métis, Jerry? Métis? From where? Quebec, okay. Constable Donovan Katzner. Huh? Kiner? Yeah, screw up. <laughs> Constable Saul Puentes Puentes Pina. <laughs> Sergeant, finally, Sebastian Andrews. Lieutenant Governor Barbara Tipplein. <laughs> and of course, the Assistant Commissioner of F Division, Commissioner Rhonda Blackburn, Blackmore. Let's have a big hand for our honored guests. <laughs> and to the uh, police that have star blankets, in case you don't know, you can take those blankets to any Powell in Canada. And. Uh, they're called snagging blankets. <laughs> All you do is walk around the perimeter, not with your uniform, by the way. <laughs> and uh, 
you can see a, a guy that you like or a pretty girl. You just go up there and snag them. That's what they use. It always works, they tell me. But a guy like me, who's been married for 54 years, I don't know if it works. Me and my wife been married for 54 years. But she says, it feels like 80 with the wind chill. <laughs> Who is that commissioned officer over there? What's his name? Ted Monroe. Ted Monroe? Welcome, sir. And that guy looks official beside you. Bert Chamberlain. Bert Chamberlain. Are you cops too? Right on. And the pretty girl beside you? Carmela Schneider. All right. Big hand for those guests over there, friends. <laughs> honor something. As we always do when we honor our friends, brothers and sisters, part of the, our human family, these police officers put their lives on the line every day for us. Let's give them an honor song with a blessing. All of you here, we ask that you will pray for them, their safety, pray for their families, and pray for what Ann Thomas says, working together. Honor song. Those drummers are like me, they're always late. And after that, I want to call on Chief Ann Thomas to come and offer closing remarks. And I think they're going to feed us, are they? Yes. Oh, boy. Deep fried squirrel. Medium rare beaver tails. No, I'm just kidding. OK, ready for the honor song? You got it? Here we go.